Well, let's say very warm welcome back to second half independent off tube studio commentary from the game at Selhurst Park. Goal is between Crystal Palace and Brentford as the second half gets underway and Palace straight away going on the attack with the ball down the left-hand side for Zaha. He leaves it for Eze. Eze's ball into the box looking for Mateta, but it just gets away from him. Me just doing enough uh, to put him off. And now Mbumo trying to turn away from uh, Zaha uh, just at the edge of the area. The ball now played up towards uh, Shandon Baptiste who runs straight into Joel Ward. I'm expecting this from Palace in the second half. They just need to have that little bit more energy uh, to try and exert their home advantage in this game because at times in the first half they struggled to do that although Brentford didn't create too much with their uh, stages of uh, attacking possession I think the Palace would uh, like to just have that little bit more of the ball going forward but uh, for the time being Brentford trying to play out from the back though the ball doesn't quite get through to Ivan Tony. so uh, Palace still in possession just looking across the uh, two 11s, confirming that there haven't been any changes at half-time. So uh, the uh, two 11s, I'll remind you in just a second. We'll just see out this attack, though, from Palace because Eze gets to the edge of the area, just tries to roll that ball into Elise. He was just a little bit further behind him. And now Rico Henry able to uh, control for Brentford, going back towards Ben Mee, who's clearance up towards the uh, halfway line. Doesn't quite reach uh, Lewis Potter. So here come Palace again now with uh, Ducore. About 40 yards out, Ducore looks up. Doesn't have uh, any options, but then uh, Mateta just moves into some space, as does Schlup. Schlup on the ball now for uh, Palace, but his pass to Zaha is under hit. Timbumo uh, wins that back for Brentford. Janelt now playing a ball over the top, looking for Ivan Tony. Tony is on side. He gets to the right-hand edge of the penalty area. Needs options in the box, so nobody's gone up there with him uh, for the time being. Tony then uh, finds a ball in towards uh, Matthias Jensen. Jensen holds it up, but Brentford slow to get forward on this occasion. Now it's Baptiste breaking into the box, plays the ball across the six-yard box. It's the perfect ball. Nobody there in a Brentford shirt to get on the end of it, though. And it's uh, Eze now back at the edge of his own box, trying to uh, play out of the back for, uh, for Palace. A challenge coming in, though, from uh, Jensen. Wins the ball back for Brentford, but runs straight into Mark Aguehi. And then it's uh, Ward's ball down the left-hand side for Eze. And Palace now trying to get uh, on the attack themselves. So for uh, Palace, it is Vincente Gaeta in goal with a back four of Nathaniel Klein, Joachim Anderson, Mark Guehi and Joel Ward. The uh, three in midfielder, Jeff Schlup, uh, Czech Ducore and Ebi Eze with Wilf Saha, Michael Elise and Joel Philip Mateta as uh, the attacking three for Brentford. David Raya in goal, a back four of Aaron Hickey, Zanke Jorgensen, Ben Mee and Rico Henry. The three in midfield, Vitaly Janelt, Shandon Baptiste and Matthias Jensen with Brian and Bumo. Keen Lewis Potter and Ivan Tony as the attacking three. And just as I was uh, giving you those two uh, lineups, Palace got down the left hand side. A challenge from Hickey puts the ball out for a corner. So now the first set piece of this second half. We also have a goal to tell you about at uh, Craven Cottage. Mitrovic, who else, has given uh, Fulham an early lead. Uh, in the second half there against Brighton as here comes the corner kick for Palace headed away by Ivan Tony. the ball drops at the edge of the box Ducore couldn't quite control it first time round goes back to Klein who then finds Elise uh, down the right hand side and uh, now it's uh, across from Ducore headed away by Ben Mee back into midfield there was also a goal uh, just at before just as half time was coming in uh, in our game it's at uh, Ellen Road it's Leeds United nil Everton 1 and it's that man again Anthony Gordon as soon as there's talk of him potentially leaving Everton he's suddenly on the score sheet again the second uh, game in a row for uh, Anthony Gordon and half time at uh, uh, well, I'll just come back to that in a second because Brentford making a real mess of this at the edge of their own box. Jensen caught in possession and then Schlup with a shot straight at David Raya. Well, it seemed like Brentford were playing out from the back, so I was having a quick look at the scores and suddenly Matthias Jensen just uh, gets caught in possession by Decore and then Schlup rushed his shot a little bit and uh, played it straight at uh, the goalkeeper. But that's something that Palace will certainly want to explore as this uh, second half wears on, the idea that they can try and uh, put pressure on that uh, Brentford back line. The Bees insist on uh, playing out from the back with a short ball, then that does give Palace a chance to try and win it back. But Zaha there stopped by Hickey, and now uh, Baptiste and Jensen exchanging passes as Brentford try to push forward down the right-hand side. It opens up a little bit here for Aaron Hickey, gets to the edge of the area, but the pass to Tony is over hit. It was never strong enough to be a shot, and it was too strong to be a pass. It's just an easy ball for uh, Gaeta uh, to claim. And uh, Palace now in possession here with uh, Ebi Eze. It goes back towards uh, Decore. Decore holding things up. Over towards uh, Klein now on the right-hand side. Klein back towards Elise. And for trying to push here. But uh, Palace for the time being just uh, trying to keep possession in midfield. Not looking to go forward 
too quickly here. Gwehi now back on the halfway line. Just goes uh, square towards uh, Decore. Check Decore now back to Gwehi. Swear sends a long ball over towards Elise on the right-hand edge of the penalty area. He's having to go uh, back towards uh, the halfway line, though, as Brentford have tried to flood that midfield. Ivan Tony there, the Brentford captain, furiously beckoning his players to get a little bit further forward. Perhaps he can see that Brentford are starting to uh, sit back and invite some of this uh, Palace pressure. Gwehi now uh, back on the halfway line, tries a long ball, but that is far too long uh, towards, uh, well, in theory, towards Jeff Schlupp, who got the furthest forward there for, uh, for Palace, but uh, that is catching practice for uh, David Raya. So just to confirm, as it stands, it is still goalless in this game. After 50 minutes, after 53 minutes at Craven Cottage, it's Fulham 1, Brighton 0. It's half-time at St Mary's, where Southampton lead against Chelsea by two goals to one. And it's 39 minutes gone at Ellen Road, where uh, Everton lead against Leeds by a goal to nil. But here come Palace now with Elise. It drops the shoulder, tries a left-footed effort. Oh, it's hit, clipped the post and gone wide. It's a really good effort from Elise there. As uh, Palace getting closer and closer to the Brentford goal now. Round of applause there from uh, Patrick Vieira. Just see from this replay. It did look to me as though the ball just grazed the outside of the post. It did. So did Raya get a hand to this? We need to give the uh, Brentford keeper credit. Or was it just a great effort from Elise that just... Well, I'm not sure if Raya does get a touch on that, actually. But uh, no, it was just a goal kick. But it was a really good effort from Elise just clipping the base of the post before going wide. And now Gwehi just misses the ball at the edge of the area. But uh, Mbumo just too far away from him to be able to uh, take advantage of that. Long ball now down the right-hand side from Klein, but uh, Schlupp caught in possession. Good challenge there from Janel to keep Brentford in possession. And now Shandon Baptiste pushing forward here for the Bees. Gets uh, challenged from behind by uh, Decore, and that will be a, a free kick to uh, Brentford. It's not like you could never slide in from behind, but uh, it's got to be with uh, real surgical precision. If you uh, just sort of slide in, and then rake the try to rake the ball and hope for the best. It's very unlikely you're going to get away with that. And uh, the referee uh, gives the uh, free kick Brentford's way. 52 minutes gone. Goalless here at uh, Selhurst Park. Just uh, wait to see whether or not uh, this free kick is within shooting. It is, I would say it is within shooting range. It's probably about 32, maybe 34 yards away from goal. Matthias uh, Jensen standing over it. It's over on the left-hand side, so there is scope to try and uh, get an angle for a cross here as well. Jensen takes it quickly. Oh, and it doesn't work out for Brentford with Ivan Tony missing the ball. Love to see a replay to see if Tony would have been offside. I don't think he would have been. Ball was played over the top by Jensen, and Ivan Tony just missed it. Couldn't quite get his uh, foot to that one, and he's only five or six yards out there, Ivan Tony, as well. You'd imagine that if he makes contact with it, that is going to be in the back of the net. But uh, first substitution of the evening, it's going to be a change of striker for uh, Crystal Palace with uh, Jean-Philippe Mateta uh, going off and uh, former Celtic man on Sonnet Edouard uh, coming on in his place. He uh, certainly had a great start for uh, Palace, did uh, Edouard. In his uh, first couple of games off the bench and starting, he got uh, goals uh, last season. But, uh, Patrick Vieira still trying to find his uh, best solution going forward. Meanwhile, Fulham take a two-goal lead uh, against uh, Brighton, and it's Lewis Dunk with an own goal that uh, puts Fulham two up. Which is a bit of a surprise, although Fulham have made a very good start this season. They haven't really been blown out of the water in any of the games they've uh, played. And uh, certainly a couple of big wins for uh, Fulham as well. And if they can hold on to that lead against Brighton, that will be a, a real statement of intent there from uh, Marco Silva's side. In the meantime, here at Selhurst Park, Brentford have uh, won themselves a throw. It's level with the penalty area, so you can expect a long ball here from Matthias Jensen. Baptiste is there for the short ball as well. Palace fans getting frustrated as to how long it's taking Brentford uh, to set up for this throw on. But uh, Jensen now launches this one towards the edge of the six-yard box, hooked away by uh, Anderson, and then Eze get, just gets there ahead of Hickey. A challenge coming in, though, from uh, Janel. Wins the ball back for uh, Brentford, but uh, Rico Henry with no other option than to go back to uh, David Raya, who uh, miscues his clearance slightly. He puts a lot of height on it, but uh, just goes slightly over towards the right-hand side, and Bumo uh, couldn't keep that in play. And it's out for a uh, throw to uh, Crystal Palace. Now back with uh, Joel Ward. And uh, he goes back towards Anderson. Anderson now down the uh, right-hand side for Nathaniel Klein. 
then back to uh, Anderson. It's the visitors just sitting back here. Palace seeing a little bit more of the ball again. Eze now in towards Decore. This is still around about the halfway line, though. Brentford trying to play quite a high offside line just to condense the pitch here for Palace. But Edouard finds a bit of space, turns away and gets the ball in towards uh, Eze. Just wanted a little bit too much time on the ball there, did Ebi Eze. And then same uh, problem for Brian and Bumo. He's easily robbed of the ball. Eze wins it back for Palace and finds Elise at the edge of the area. Elise trying another one of those left-footed curling efforts from the right-hand edge of the box. His previous effort was low down and hit the base of the post. This time he went for the top corner. But he lifts it at least a couple of yards over and it's uh, away for a uh, goal kick to Brentford. And as I say, Palace, first of all, losing the ball far too easily. But then Mbumo just trying to stroll out from uh, the edge of his own box. was Just had the ball picked off him there by uh, Eze. He found uh, Elise, who then uh, looked up and, as I say, just leaned back a little bit too much on this occasion, did Elise. And uh, the ball away for a goal kick. But now a long ball down the right-hand side here for Brentford. Flicked on by Mbumo. Doesn't quite get through towards uh, Ivan Tony, And so the ball now cleared back towards the halfway line. But it is uh, Brentford in possession. Janelt going back to me. Ball now towards uh, Henry. He's under pressure from Elise. Elise wins the ball back there for uh, Palace. Henry just flicked it up a bit too high. Uh, Klein then playing it back towards uh, Tony. Who gets dummied there by uh, goalkeeper Gaeta. That's always one that uh, the fans will enjoy. Where the goalkeeper just drops a shoulder. Leaves the striker behind him. And now Joel Ward. Over towards uh, Jeff Schlup down the right-hand side. Schlup into Elise. Schlup carries on on the overlap and he tries to get on the end of that. He back heels that, but it's already out of play. It was uh, a nice idea there from uh, uh, Jeff Schlup. Lewis uh, Potter was tracking back with him. Schlup realised he was running out of pitch, so he effectively tried to back heel the ball into uh, Lewis Potter to force a corner. But uh, sadly for Schlupp, he was already off the pitch. He was already behind the line when he did that. So it's a uh, goal kick to Brentford. Uh, Raya to uh, Hickey. Hickey under pressure there from uh, Zaha. He does well, though, the former Bologna man. Up to Mbumo. Back to Hickey, who carries on his run through the uh, middle this time. Sends it over towards the uh, left-hand side now for uh, Henry, who's immediately been closed down by Elise. And uh, Henry's had a problem a few times getting past Michael Elise. Again, he tried to dummy him there. Has to just settle for a throw-on. And a uh, throw-on now down the uh, left-hand side for uh, uh, Brentford. Henry's ball in towards uh, Jensen. Jensen trying to keep it in play. Elise again doing good defensive work. Winning the ball back for Palace and then drawing the free kick as well. That's excellent from uh, Michael Elise. Back helping out his uh, team in defence. 58 minutes gone. Still goalless at uh, Selhurst Park between uh, Crystal Palace and Brentford. But uh, we're getting word that there is a penalty for uh, Brighton at uh, Craven Cottage. So things have really come alive uh, in uh, that game. Fulham and Brighton were 0-0 at half-time. Fulham taking the lead on 48 minutes through Alexander Mitrovic. Then Lewis Dunk on 55 minutes, uh, making it 2-0 with an own goal. But now potentially it's Alexis McAllister just to get in confirmation that Alexis McAllister has scored for uh, Brighton from the penalty spot. So it is Fulham 2, Brighton 1. Game on at uh, Craven Cottage. Final seconds of the first half uh, at uh, Ellen Road, where uh, Leeds are trailing against uh, Everton. That was an 8 p.m. kickoff, and we're a few seconds away from uh, the second half starting at uh, uh, St. Mary's, where Southampton lead against Chelsea. But here come Palace now with Zaha. Zaha trying an effort, and it's in the back of the net. 59 minutes gone, and that is Wilf Zaha all over. He's done very little in this game, but he was shown too much space at the edge of the area. Put it onto his right foot. Curling effort into the top corner. No chance for uh, David Raya. And uh, Crystal Palace lead by a goal to nil. It's uh, disappointing from Brentford. But it's a great strike from uh, Wilf Zaha. He does really well there uh, with the uh, chance that he got. Brentford just giving him a little bit too much uh, space uh, at the uh, edge of the area. It was uh, with Ducore. He held it up for... Uh, Palace then found uh, Zaha, and Zaha didn't need much of an invitation there, but he was shown too much of the goal there as uh, Hickey tried to stop him going down that left channel. Zaha then put it onto his right foot, dug it out, and it's a great goal from Wilf Zaha. It's that kind of goal that you always expect that he can get. Doesn't always manage it, of course, but uh, that's the beauty of having someone like Wilfred Zaha in your team is that even when not much is happening, it's a bit of a quiet game, not too much being created in front of goal. He gets that one chance, and he takes it. And uh, Crystal Palace lead on uh, 60 minutes now. 
camera now focusing on uh, Steve Parrish, Palace uh, chairman, director of football, uh, Mark Bright sat next to him. And he would have been uh, very impressed with that goal, although a very stoic uh, 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 Mr Parrish there, but I'm sure he would have been uh, very pleased uh, with uh, that goal being scored. And, uh, Palace now leading by a goal to nil in that uh, section of the Palace Ultras, if I can call them that, in the corner there. Absolutely bouncing after that goal. It's, uh, the, the Palace are, are shooting into that uh, end as well in the uh, second half. And, uh, Zaha. Been quiet for most of the game up to now, but that's the whole point with Will Zaha. He gets that one chance. Sometimes he's moaning at the referee. Sometimes he's uh, trying to uh, upset or is getting upset by opposition players. Gets upset by his own teammates sometimes. But uh, when it all goes right... He's a very, very difficult player to stop and uh, proof there with that excellent goal. Palace now in front. Uh, Brentford with it all to do. You feel as though their best uh, moments in the game came in the first 15, 20 minutes of the first half. And they need to just find their way again offensively as uh, the ball now back with Vitali Janel. Being closed down by uh, Schlup, but he still finds a pass down the left-hand side for uh, Rico Henry. Henry heading towards the penalty area, being stopped by Elise. Square now to uh, Matthias Jensen. Jensen's attempt at switching play there to, from left to right is uh, headed out by uh, Ducouré. Looks like a call, uh, flush in the face there, uh, Ducouré, but uh, I think he should be okay to uh, play on. Thomas Frank and his assistant Brian Reamer in uh, discussion there as to what they could do next uh, in terms of trying to... Uh, Get Brentford back into this game. But uh, here comes uh, Jensen now down the left-hand side. Lifts a ball in, but that's catching practice uh, for uh, goalkeeper Vincente Gaeta. Bowls it out quickly to a goal scorer, Wilf Zaha. Under pressure there from Hickey and Mbumo. Zaha now going square uh, towards uh, Decore. Back to Anderson. Schlup now back to Anderson again. Decore. A bit of pressure now having to uh, play the ball back towards his uh, own goalkeeper as uh, Gaeta sends a longer ball out towards uh, Joel Ward this time. Ward looking for options, finds uh, Zaha. Zaha runs uh, as they exchange passes before the ball going back towards Guehi. And this is where uh, Palace are just going to try and slow things down now. You always want to keep the ball away from the opposition after you've just scored to really frustrate them, potentially draw them even further forward. And give Palace even more opportunities uh, to try and uh, get a second. Ben Mina with a header puts the ball out for a uh, throw to Palace down the right-hand side. And it is now half-time at Ellen Road. Leeds United trailing against Everton by a goal to nil. Anthony Gordon on 17 minutes. Uh, Leeds having 70% possession in that uh, first half, but no shots on target. That could prove to be a problem for uh, Jesse March's side as the season wears on. Same as for Brentford here. Palace have had 11 efforts on goal in this game. Four of them have been on target and once hit the post as well. Brentford have had three efforts on goal. None of them are on target. So uh, for all that uh, good early work from Brentford, not much to show for it. And now the scoreline uh, is against them as well. Although Palace very frustrated there by Michael Elise. Michael Elise, I should say, very frustrated about the fact that uh, a throw on has been given against him there. But uh, no harm done. Uh, Ducore wins the ball back almost immediately here for uh, Palace. And now Eze down the uh, left-hand side for uh, Zaha. Zaha tangling there with Aaron Hickey. Zaha expecting a free kick. And he, it is a free kick, but it's not for Zaha. It's against him. And uh, I'm sure you can imagine Zaha absolutely fuming about that. But Brentford waste the free kick. They took it too quickly. Palace now back in possession here. Elise in towards uh, Schlup. And Schlup in midfield here now with uh, Eze and Ducore. They've looked like quite a good uh, uh, a trio in midfield for Palace, I have to say. The three of them have uh, looked pretty accomplished. Ducore in that slightly deeper role. Schlup and uh, Eze being allowed to get a bit further forward. And it really has uh, pr proved to be problematic for Brentford at times. Elise now from the uh, left, uh, from the right-hand side sends a great ball over towards the left-hand edge of the area here for Zaha. Zaha then with a cross. Oh, it's overhit though. It's headed up in the air uh, by uh, uh, Lewis Potter. Ian Lewis Potter trying to get that ball back for Brentford. But uh, Anderson is up here to help out uh, in midfield for uh, Palace. Now it's with uh, Elise. It's got Nathaniel Klein for support. He's got Schlup as well. That's where the ball has gone now. Edge of the area. 
Edward just trying to uh, turn it back. That's a strong challenge there from Guehi. And then a ball played over the top. Brentford with a chance here now. Bumo up against Joel Ward. Oh, the ball just gets tangled there with Brian and Bumo. Then he tries to do too much in taking on Joel Ward. Joel Ward's too experienced to fall for that uh, ball played into space uh, trick that Mbumo tried there. Ball cleared back into midfield. Brentford in possession now with Zanke Jorgensen. Square towards uh, Yanel. Out towards the uh, left-hand side now for uh, Rico Henry. And uh, Henry in towards uh, Baptiste. But uh, Palace have got the edge of the area pretty well marshalled here now. Brentford not finding any easy route to go. Zanka Jorgensen stepping forward here. And finds uh, Jensen on the right-hand side. Jensen trying a left-footed ball in. Henry may still keep this in play. Uh, Baptiste slides in, but it's not going to be uh, kept in play in the end. Baptiste uh, flying into the advertising boards there. But it looks like he's OK. Brentford preparing a uh, double change, and it's a double midfield change, interestingly enough. It's uh, Frank Onyeka and uh, Josh De Silva getting ready to come on. So we'll wait and see what uh, Thomas Frank is uh, planning here. Onyeka, you would imagine, will be coming on for um, oh, Baptiste. Yano, I can't imagine Jensen will be taken off. Whether or not so they want to put De Silva on in, into that midfield three or perhaps get him playing in, in the attacking three, uh, that remains to be seen. But so those two players have their tracksuits off. They're ready to come on any time now. So as soon as the ball goes out of play, we're going to see a double change from Brentford. Palace making the one change so far early on in the second half on Sonny Edouard replacing uh, Jean-Philippe Mateta. We're now back with uh, David Raya. 67 minutes gone at Selhurst Park. Palace lead against Brentford by a goal to nil. The goal scored by Wilf Saha on uh, 59 minutes. And uh, Brentford just looking a little bit... One second, shell shock's too strong a word, but they're just a bit disjointed, I think, since conceding that goal. They've uh, had a few problems. In fact, it's going to be a triple change for Brentford, as well as the two players I mentioned, Onyeka and De Silva. Uh, Mikel Damsgaard is also going to be coming on. So this may well be a, a change of three... Uh, midfield is here for uh, Brentford. Shandon Baptiste is going off. We can see that. So uh, Baptiste is off. I'll just wait to see who the other players are going off before I say exactly who's coming on for who. But uh, according to the uh, board, uh, Mikel Damsgaard is going to be uh, coming on. Is this for Baptiste? Uh, Frank Onyeka is coming on for Brian and Mbuma. That makes absolutely no sense at all. So Mbuma certainly uh, is off the field. But uh, Onyeka will go into that uh, central uh, midfield role. And uh, I would imagine that um, De Silva, Josh De Silva, seems to be coming on here for uh, 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 Keen Lewis Potter. Onyeka is on for uh, Baptiste. And uh, Mikhail Damsgaard is uh, on here uh, for uh, Brian and Bumo. So uh, certainly Thomas Frank uh, not, uh, not mincing with his uh, changes here, really trying to... Uh, Get his side into this game with uh, 23 minutes still to play. They have still got uh, plenty of time. And what they need really is just to have that little bit more uh, composure when they're in possession. Something that they've uh, lacked at times in this game. So we're back in play now. Brentford appealing a handball against Edouard at the edge of the area. Referee Simon Hooper not interested. Ball now cleared up to the halfway line. Uh, Tony tangling with Mark Guehi there. And uh, just a little bit of afters there as well. Tony perhaps unnecessarily uh, shoving Guehi, and then Guehi perhaps just accidentally on purpose just lifting that uh, boot up just as he was falling, just to perhaps uh, make a little bit of contact there in uh, revenge to Ivan Tony. As I say, a bit unnecessary from Tony, but then uh, Guehi knows what he's doing as well. He's lifting his feet up there uh, quite deliberately, I think, to, uh, to catch Ivan Tony. And uh, the referee just calling Yahim Anderson over now for a quick word. Not really quite sure uh, what the referee was unhappy about there with the uh, Palace centre-back. But uh, he's now gotten his uh, telling off and uh, we can get uh, play underway with this uh, free kick to Palace. And uh, yeah, now with Palace one up, they're just taking that little bit longer. Gwecky asking, is it definitely from here? Is it definitely from here, F? Yes, it is. And uh, the free kick now taken long by uh, the Palace defender over towards uh, Lise. One back by Rico Henry. And the uh, first touch here now for uh, Frank Onyeka finds uh, uh, Aaron Hickey down the right-hand side. Hickey playing it uh, back in towards Zanka Jorgensen. Hickey again down the right, looking for uh, Josh De Silva. Tries to roll away from uh, Joel Ward. Manages it as well, does De Silva. Plays a poor ball, though, towards the edge of the area for uh, Damsgaard. That one's easily won back by Anderson. But then a bit of a mess between Edward and Elise. They lose the ball in midfield for Palace. So Brentford have it back now with Frank Onyeka. 
Nigeria International now over towards uh, Hickey. Hickey in towards De Silva. De Silva on his left foot. Didn't fancy a right-footed cross there. Goes back towards Onyeka. He now ranges towards the edge of the box. Uh, goes back to De Silva. Bit more space for Josh De Silva now to put a cross in with his left foot. It's headed away towards the edge of the box. Falls kindly here for De Silva. Though. De Silva, that's a poor effort from him. It's a poor effort. Josh De Silva on his favoured left foot inside the penalty area. Maybe only 10, 11 yards out on a bit of an angle from the right-hand side. You would want him to test the goalkeeper a lot more uh, than what he does here, De Silva. In fairness, there is a defender, uh, Decore, just tracking back into his box. Perhaps uh, putting a bit of pressure there on uh, De Silva. But even so, should have done a bit better there, De Silva. He scored a couple of uh, goals for Brentford already this season. An excellent one away at uh, Leicester to get Brentford an equaliser and of course the opening goal against Manchester United although that was uh, an abomination really how uh, De Silva was able to score that he's somebody who doesn't tend to pass with his <laughs> right foot very often so the fact that he managed to score from outside of the area with his right foot just shows what a big mistake that was from uh, goalkeeper David, uh, from, uh, David De Gea in that game but getting back here to uh, Selhurst Park we're going to get a booking here for Aaron Hickey he's not even trying to disguise the fact that he's uh, pulling on Wilf Zaha's shirt there Easy decision for uh, uh, Simon Hooper. Hickey into the book. And uh, free kick now to uh, Crystal Palace on the left-hand side. Ward sends that towards the edge of the area. Headed down uh, by uh, Edward. Picked up now by Schlup. He goes towards uh, Elise. Elise uh, into the penalty area. Tries to get a cross in. It's deflected up by uh, Rico Henry. And it's out for a, a corner kick to uh, Crystal Palace. Brentford just haven't been able to regain their shape since that uh, Palace goal. And the home side will be uh, uh, well advised here to try and capitalise on that. A second goal here for Palace, I think, really does put them in a commanding position with Brentford struggling to get anything on target. And even when it is on target, it really is uh, very tame like that effort we just saw from De Silva. Short corner hit uh, between a Schlipp and Zaha. Zaha then plays the ball along the six-yard box. That's deflected out for a, another corner. And uh, Ivan Tony. Uh, the one who put that uh, challenge in. So still 2-1 to Southampton against uh, Chelsea. With uh, Lavia and Adam Armstrong getting the goals uh, for Southampton after Raheem Sterling had opened the scoring uh, in that game. The corner kick now for a Palace. An outswing up. It's not a good one though from Eze. Easily headed back into midfield where Ducore has dropped deep here for Palace. He flicks the ball in looking for Eze who ran into the box. He's then... Uh, stopped by Ivan Tony, who is then brought down. Brentford demanding a yellow card for that uh, challenge. Referee doesn't seem to be too worried about that, though. It's just a free kick. And Raya takes it quickly, and Raya takes it long, looking for a Damsgaard who got the furthest forward. That one's headed back into midfield. It's with Rico Henry into uh, Tony, who's joining the attack now. Back to Onyeka. All on the uh, halfway line now with uh, Zanke Jorgensen. Uh, down the uh, left-hand side, the ball deflects out. It is going to be a uh, throw-on. Uh, right now, it's difficult to see how Brentford going to get back into this game. Really has been uh, a tough second half uh, for Brentford, just as it's been a much improved uh, half from Palace. They sort of allowed parts of the first half to just uh, pass them by at... Um, Certainly the first 15, 20 minutes, Brentford seemed to be the ones with the initiative, but didn't have anything to show for all that initiative. And now as uh, we go into the last uh, 15 minutes of this game, I have to say that it's uh, Palace who look uh, very likely to win this game. Now, I can't really see how Brentford could uh, muster an equaliser as things stand. Of course, a goal you can get from anywhere, but just from open play, the way that Brentford have been uh, trying to get at Palace in the last 15, 20 minutes, they haven't really been able to find that killer pass into the box. And been able to keep that uh, attacking possession either as Ben Mee's header uh, towards Josh De Silva, headed away by Gwecki, and then a second header from uh, Joel Ward. It drops to uh, Onyeka, but his header is uh, quickly cleared. It's up in the air, still bouncing inside the uh, Palace half, but uh, Eze gets there first. He's uh, uh, robbed of it though by Hickey. Aaron Hickey now running uh, straight in towards Decore, so he goes back towards uh, Ben Mee. And uh, Mee and uh, Janelt uh, exchanging passes here now. Zanka Jorgensen on the uh, right-hand side, runs straight into Michael Elise and then can't bring him down. Elise is away down the left-hand side. He's got to me and Onyeka in front of him. He's got Edouard breaking into the box. Elise goes alone and he goes wide. Probably should have looked for the pass there. He had options to uh, play it square to Zaha. Could have tried to thread it a through ball through towards um, 
on Sonny Edouard as well. But this is, again, Brentford just being far too laid back in possession. Uh, Zanka loses the ball, then tries to slide in to win it back. Missed Elise. I mean, if he'd have made contact with Elise, it would have been a nailed on yellow card. But uh, Palace now making a, a midfield substitution here. A double change, in fact. And the first is going to be in central midfield with Jeff Schlup uh, replaced here by uh, Luka Milivojevic. And uh, it looks like uh, Ebieze is going off as well. And uh, Jordan Ayew is uh, coming on in his place. So Jordan Ayew on for Ebieze. And uh, Luka Milivojevic on here for uh, Jeff Schlup. So that's uh, quite a, 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 I would say, a, a good... Um, maybe not adventurous is too strong a word, but it, it just shows that it's not a complete defensive change here from uh, Patrick Vieira. In uh, taking off Schlup, who is attack-minded, and bringing on Milivojevic, he's trying to shore up the midfield. But then taking off Eze to replace him by Ayu is... I wouldn't say they're, they're sort of like-for-like -like players, but they're sort of similar mould, really, in terms of being midfielders that uh, are far more forward-thinking than they are defensive. And uh, Brentford playing out from the back now with uh, Onyeka. But uh, I just under pressure there from Edouard. He goes uh, back towards uh, David Raya. 77 uh, minutes gone now. Palace leading by a goal to nil. Fulham leading against Brighton by two goals to one. Southampton leading against Chelsea by two goals to one. And uh, it's just coming up to the start of the second half at Ellen Road, uh, where Leeds are uh, trading a, a goal to nil at home to uh, Everton. But uh, as I say, that uh, second half is just about to uh, restart. All the games uh, this evening in the uh, Premier League are available on our service, as is the 8 o'clock kickoff in the Championship, where it's currently Watford 1, Middlesbrough 1, and Watford playing in the black and white shirts this evening uh, to uh, commemorate the original kit that they played in when they were first formed. Let me just say, well, I saw uh, a quick clip of that. It did seem quite weird seeing Watford playing at home at Vicarage Road in a black and white shirt, but uh, as I say, sometimes uh, it's a nice... I always think it's good when, uh, when teams do that for a, a specific game. Just remember that... Uh, towards the uh, edge of the area but uh, that one was uh, a bit too long there for Damsgaard that's twice now that Brentford have tried to pick out uh, Mikel Damsgaard with a long ball I'm not sure it's the right idea to be doing that he's one of the smallest players on the pitch and he's up against Anderson there who's pretty much going to win a header uh, just standing against the Damsgaard but Anderson did get the final touch on that and uh, has that gone out for a corner I think it has so uh, in the end long ball for Brentford paying some sort of dividend on this occasion Corner kick now from the uh, left-hand side. And it's uh, Matthias Jensen standing over this one. Jensen uh, whipping it in. It's headed down and stops inside the six-yard box. A bit of head tennis in now before me hooks it wide at the post. That was a, a decent effort from Ben Mee. It was inviting the effort, really. After a little bit of head tennis uh, from the initial corner kick, this one was uh, Tony with the diving header. Anderson headed it. On. Then Janel tried to head it back to Ben Mee. It bounced before it found Ben Mee. And then on the turn, he tried to volley that towards goal. But uh, he missed by uh, quite a way in the end. And, uh, we're going to see another double change here for Brentford. They've already made three. and bringing on Onyeka, Damsgaard and De Silva. And now Vissa and Godos are getting ready to come on. So Matthias Jensen is off to be replaced by uh, Johan Vissa. So that's what it says on the board. I would imagine it makes more sense for Godos to be coming on for a Jensen. But uh, in fact, uh, Hickey's going to be the other player to go off. So I do wonder exactly where they're going to... Are they going to have Godos playing as a sort of uh, emergency uh, right back in that uh, defence? We'll have to wait and see exactly what uh, Thomas Frank uh, has in mind. But uh, Sam Godos on the field now. for. Remember, that's interesting. Where they say there have been quite a few rumours that both Onyeka and Godos were going to be on their way. Uh, for season-long loans, potentially into the championship uh, before the end of the window. But uh, with the window closing uh, tomorrow, Brentford have still got both of these players in their uh, on in their squad, and they're uh, both on the pitch now as Palace uh, getting ready to make their fourth change. And uh, confirmation that it's going to be uh, Elise to go off uh, to be replaced uh, by um, uh, Tyrick Mitchell. So this is going to mean that uh, Joel Ward now. Actually, I'm trying to think what this is going to mean. Is this going to mean that Klein goes into a more midfield role or a pan is going to play with three at the back now? But whatever it means is that uh, Mitchell is now on uh, to try and uh, shore things up here for Palace as we go into the last uh, 10 minutes of this game. And it's leading by a goal to nil. No change in the uh, Premier League scores that they have now resumed at Ellen Road. It's now the second half uh, between Leeds and Everton. 
Uh, just to run you through the championship very quickly. Birmingham 1, Norwich 0. Burnley have just taken the lead against Millwall. It's Cardiff 0, Luton 2. QPR 3, Hull City 0. Sheffield United 3, Reading 0. Wigan 1, West Brom 1. And uh, Watford 1, Middlesbrough 1. Those are the scores in the uh, championship. As I mentioned in the Premier League. 2-1, Fulham leading against Brighton. Southampton 2-1 up against Chelsea. And uh, here at uh, Selhurst Park. Uh, Palace leading against Brentford by a goal to number. Brentford are seeing a little bit more of the ball now in these last uh, few minutes, albeit still a long, long away from goal. It's uh, back with uh, Zanka Jorgensen now. He finds Johan Visser, who's muscled off the ball there. Milivojevic uh, back towards uh, Anderson. Anderson now with a ball down the left-hand side, headed forward by Godos. Ball drops here to uh, Damsgaard, who missed it in the air. Anderson's able to clear it away for uh, Palace. To Corey now into Edouard. Back to uh, Zaha. Zaha just loses his footing there as he tried to play uh, the ball over towards uh, Ayu. Rico Henry now trying a long ball to uh, pick out uh, Ivan Tony. It just gets away from him. Damsgaard trying to close down Joel Ward. And it's a bit of a shank clearance there from Joel Ward. It stays in play and it's uh, here with Sam Godos down the right-hand side for Brentford. Godos uh, going back in towards uh, Jorgensen. Onyeka now back to uh, Zanka Jorgensen. Ben Mee. Now to uh, Vitali Janel. Janel uh, to uh, Damsgaard, who's trying down the uh, left-hand side this time. Referee spots a foul there, but gives uh, Brentford the advantage. Albeit Brentford was still a long way away from goal anyway. Now Palace give away another free kick. Luka Milivojevic just uh, running straight into Josh De Silva. Free kick to Brentford now with uh, De Silva taking it short. Back to uh, Onyeka. But again, Palace really have flooded their own half now. They're not playing particularly. Uh, they're not playing particularly high. They've actually sat back quite deep. But in doing that, they've just flooded their half. So it's very difficult. Although Brentford have had a long spell now of possession, they haven't really been able to gain any territory. They've actually had to go back into their own half now just to keep the ball. As uh, De Silva finds Visser, Visser back to Godos. Godos's ball into the box. Miscued clearance there from. Uh, uh, Anderson, but he gets away with it. He actually works out like a good pass to the goalkeeper in the end. Really sliced it there with his uh, left foot, did Anderson. But uh, it bounced in the arms of Gait, and there's no way you could accuse uh, Anderson of intending to do that. So it's never going to be a back pass. Renford now pushing forward with De Silva. Spots Godos down the right-hand side. That's a better ball, but still Gait to their first. Gets there just before uh, Visser and Tony. But Gaeta rushes his clearance. That goes straight to Vitali Yano. And uh, you can see as soon as uh, uh, Brentford win the ball back, three Palace players turn their back straight towards their goalkeeper. And say, Look, what was that? Because there was no need for uh, Gaeta to send it out that quickly. Just inviting more pressure here. Damsgaard with the ball now towards Tony at the edge of the area. Him and Gwehi have had a strong battle. And Tony goes sliding in there. That's going to be a yellow card for the uh, Brentford captain. It's a strong challenge. It's a centre-forwards challenge from Ivan Tony. let's face it. He was frustrated at being uh, robbed of the ball. And he, that's a bad challenge from Ivan Tony. If he does that with a little bit more of a uh, of a run up shall i say or with just a little bit more force he may have even been uh, uh, asking we may have even been seeing var getting involved because that was a very strong challenge there from uh, ivan tony never got close to the ball really and uh, anderson now picks himself up he's unhappy having a quick word there with ivan tony as we know uh, anderson isn't the player who's uh, about to uh, uh, who's about to uh, just walk away from a, a situation like that he's uh, bound to uh, let his uh, opinions be known. And Ivan Tony is certainly not one who's going to back down either. But it's a uh, free kick to Crystal Palace now at the edge of their own box. And it's a uh, it's taken long here by uh, goalkeeper Gaeta. Headed out by uh, Ben Mee. A throw on to uh, Palace down the uh, right-hand side. Patrick Vieira just trying to uh, organise his uh, players now. For these last uh, seven minutes plus injury time. A, a big win for uh, Palace. As I said, they've just had the uh, the one win in the league so far. Lost to Arsenal at home on opening day. Drew with Liverpool. Beat Villa. And they had a win away at Oxford United in the Cup before that to defeat to Manchester City. But Zaha now heading towards the edge of the area. Strikes it. But that's a long, long way over the bar there from uh, Wilf Zaha. Never looked like it was uh, going to uh, threaten the goal. And that is out for a uh, goal kick. Uh, Raya. Looking to try and restart play quickly, but uh, it's going to have a problem in playing out from the back because Palace have left three players up. And in the end, uh, Raya realises that, plays it long towards Vitali Jano, who's uh, muscled off the ball by Klein. Damsgaard's back there to support, and uh, eventually it's a uh, long clearance from uh, Ben Mee. And, uh, 
Brentford now have it back inside their own half with uh, Vitali Yano. His pass uh, to Damsgaard doesn't quite reach him. Ivojevic then uh, bounces into him. It's going to be a uh, throw to Brentford down the left. And out uh, waiting to take this. It's uh, quickly towards uh, Damsgaard who goes down. That is going to be a uh, free kick. From Simon Hooper in no doubt there. Brentford want to take it quickly. Palace not letting them. So from Palace's point of view, all they want to do now is make it as uh, slow and frustrating for uh, Brentford as possible. You can see a former Palace manager there, Alan Pardew, in the stands this evening. So he had some uh, pretty good moments with uh, Palace. As a player as well as a manager, of course. That's a famous cup run. Both uh, as a player and a manager, of course. Uh, Palace couldn't quite get it over the line in the final, though. But uh, free kick to Brentford now on the uh, right-hand side. It's taken a long, long time for this to, uh, to set up. But now a long ball is pumped in towards the edge of the penalty area. There he is, uh, Joachim Anderson with a strong header away as Godos tries to keep the ball alive uh, for Brentford. Flicks it up in the air. It's then played forward by Zanka Jorgensen, but that goes straight through. Uh, towards Sonny Edward and then he plays it back towards Gwehi. A square ball from him finds uh, Anderson. Anderson now down the right-hand side. Not a good ball from Anderson. That's straight out of play for a uh, Brentford throw. Taken quickly here by uh, Damsgaard. Back towards uh, Vitali Janel. Jorgensen now on the right-hand side. Brentford exchanging a lot of passes but not gaining any territory really. They're still hugging the halfway line with all this uh, possession that they've had. Ben Mee looked up, but again, now Palace are playing higher up. They've, we can see a real change here from Palace. Uh, previously, they were trying to sit back, but now they're trying to play as high up as possible to try and uh, really condense what Brentford are doing as the ball played into the box is swept away by uh, Joel Ward. Still kept alive here by Brentford on Yeka. Can't quite uh, dance away uh, from... Uh, Decore, he's had a good game in the uh, defensive midfield uh, this evening, has uh, checked Decore. Been impressed with him as Rico Henry taking the throw now for Brentford. Finds Tony, who goes uh, back towards uh, Josh De Silva. De Silva with options here on the right-hand side. One of them is Sam Godos. Godos back to De Silva. Th uh, two Palace players closing him down. De Silva goes square to Ben Mee. Mee then finding... Uh, Damsgaard down the uh, left-hand side. A couple of passes exchanged. Now Janel into the box looking for Visser. And Johan Visser is off the bench to get an equaliser for Brentford on 87 minutes. He's been a little bit out of favour as Johan Visser in the last couple of games. A couple of quiet performances, but he's come off the bench to potentially rescue a point here for Brentford with just two and a half minutes to play. Massive goal that for Brentford. Frustration for uh, Crystal Palace who have... Uh, been organised since uh, Brentford, since they took the lead. Brentford haven't had too many chances to get back into the game. But Visser just uh, lurking inside the penalty area. Jan out with the ball. This is going to be onside here, I think, although the uh, the angle isn't perfect. We need to see one which is actually level with the line there. But for looking at it uh, from that angle, it looked to me as though uh, Visser uh, was uh, level. And it's a great header from Visser as well. Really picks his spot in the corner. With Gaeta barely able to get a hand up to uh, to get a save. Thomas Frank uh, delighted when he sees uh, Johan Visser get that goal for him. It's just a question now of whether there is going to be a uh, VAR review. They are still checking this. So uh, potentially uh, Visser might uh, have uh, strayed offside. Let's have a look at this replay here. As uh, Visser is his shoulder out. I mean Brentford were uh, denied a goal at Fulham a couple of weeks ago for the most marginal of, uh, of offsides. The question now is whether or not uh, the shoulder of... Uh, whether or not the shoulder on that uh, left-hand side from Mitchell, is that playing Visser on side? It's a very, very tight decision. We're, we're being showed the uh, sort of purple screen VAR replay, but they're not doing the line, so it's very difficult to tell. It's very, very tight. I wouldn't like to say one way or the other whether this is going to be uh, given as uh, onside or offside. No telling really with uh, the English VAR exactly what they're going to do. Sometimes they allow goals where the uh, the foot or the, the, the shoulder or the arm is just uh, straying. But no, we can see confirmation that the uh, body of uh, Mark Gwehi is leaning in front of Johan Visser. Johan Visser is onside. The goal stands and uh, Brentford have equalised here with uh, just a... Uh, well, now we've got 30 seconds of uh, play to play. We're going to have a bit of injury time because that VAR check took a while. 
had a couple of uh, substitutions as well, of course, as well as Palace getting a goal earlier. So I would predict somewhere of four or five minutes of injury time would be my guess here at uh, Selhurst Park. But so now, are we going to see a late winner in this game? Palace uh, looking odds on to, uh, to win the game. Brentford getting that equaliser late on. Ben Mina giving a free kick away on the uh, halfway line. Chance now for uh, Palace uh, to try and do something. This Ben Mee not happy with uh, that decision. As indeed most of uh, Selhurst Park, barring the uh, the travelling uh, Brentford fans. Not the longest uh, journey, although saying that, getting from uh, West London down to uh, Selhurst, the local uh, train station, isn't the easiest uh, route. And certainly by a car these days, it's getting ever harder to move around the capital, which is, of course, uh, quite purposeful by... Uh, Council's not just in London, but uh, meanwhile, we've got five minutes displayed. I did think it was going to be a bit of injury time, so we're into injury time now uh, at the end of this game. Uh, Palace 1, Brentford 1. Fulham still leading against Brighton by two goals to one. That game's into the fourth minute of injury time there. Uh, Southampton 2-1 up against Chelsea. They're in the uh, 76th minute. And uh, at Ellen Road, there's 58 minutes gone. Leeds 1, Everton 1. Leeds have got an equaliser, and it's uh, Sinestera. The young Colombian getting the uh, equaliser there uh, for uh, Leeds. But a uh, throw on to Brentford now down the left. Uh, Janel in towards Tony. Back towards Janel. Then Tony moving forward, running straight into Joel Ward. Bouncing ball in midfield, which is volleyed back towards goal by uh, De Silva. But it's uh, effective. It does get back to David Raya and no Palace player close to him. Raya now plays a long ball down the middle. Headed forward here by Gwecki Visser. Running uh, straight into problems there, but he just about keeps possession alongside Onyeka. That's good play. And then Visser down the uh, right-hand side. Godos back to Visser, who carried on his run on the overlap. Running into trouble here. Johan Visser puts a cross in, which is uh, flicked away by uh, Anderson. Then a loose ball in midfield. Uh, ben Mee gets there just ahead of Will Saha. And then uh, Yanel up towards uh, Ivan Tony. Uh, Yanel then carried on his run. He gets to the edge of the area, running straight into Anderson. Yanel with no option but to uh, force to uh, track back. Keeping uh, possession here for Brentford. De Silva into Tony. Tony, oh, he goes down inside the box far too easily. I don't think there was ever any doubt, any any debate about whether that was going to be a penalty or not. To me, it looked like he fell too easily. But now suddenly Palace have a chance at the other end as Edouard and Zaha push forward. Edouard leaves the ball for Zaha. Zaha breaks into the box. He loses his balance, but uh, he's never going to go down. And now Zaha and Zanka Jorgensen are facing off for Zaha. I think Jorgensen was unhappy that Zaha went down too easily. Zaha was unhappy with Jorgensen being unhappy with him. And uh, in the end, the two of them have managed to defuse the situation uh, without the referee having to uh, stop play. Strong challenge there uh, from Onyeka. Keeps Brentford in possession. Damsgaard then going back towards De Silva. And De Silva picking out Visser, who plays a diagonal ball towards the edge of the area. Damsgaard heads it down for Tony. Tony needs some support. Here comes Rico Henry. Henry into the box. His strike is straight at Gaeta. And it's uh, out for a corner kick. But that was a lovely move from Brentford. Probably one of the best moves that Brentford have had uh, this evening. They've struggled to sort of have any kind of slick passing. But Damsgaard with the header down to Tony. And then Tony threads a lovely ball through towards. Henry but his strike is straight at Gaeta uh, Henry firing at the near post and Gaeta getting his uh, body in the way but that's a great chance for uh, Brentford to win it late on substitution uh, sorry I thought we were going to see a substitution I think there was just a bit more pushing and shoving in the box after that uh, uh, save there from Gaeta I'm pretty sure it is has gone out for a corner it's just taking a little while to uh, set up we've still got around 90 seconds of injury time to uh, play here at uh, Selhurst Park. And it's going to be an in-swinger from uh, Mikel Damsgaard. Plenty of players to aim for inside the uh, penalty area. Drops, it's off the bar! And cleared, it deflected off the bar and cleared back into midfield. Couldn't quite see who got the final touch before it hit the bar, but Brentford, oh, the, just the woodwork separating them from a, an injury time winner here at uh, Selhurst Park. Ryan now pumping that ball back into the box, but it's too close. And his... Uh, Got a fellow goalkeeper, a fellow compatriot there, Vincente Gaeta, with an easy save. As uh, Palace now go forward with Gaeta's long clearance, headed down by uh, Edouard, back to Zaha. Zaha going uh, square uh, towards Decore. Milivojevic now in uh, towards uh, Mitchell. Back to Milivojevic, his ball towards the right-hand edge of the box. Sliding across there was Nathaniel Klein, but uh, he missed that one, couldn't keep it in play. And we've got less than a minute of injury time now, so potentially there won't be any time for a winner. Who is it who got the final? It was a diving header, but so who got the final touch? It was Ben Mee. Ben Mee diving, and the ball actually bounced 
off Meese's head into the turf and then off the bar before being cleared away. Joel Ward now playing the ball back towards uh, Gaeta. His clearance up towards the halfway line, headed forward uh, by Zanka Jorgensen. Straight onto the head of Joel Ward. Rico Henry slips and uh, couldn't quite keep Brentford in position. Milivojevic now forward for uh, Zaha, who tries to touch it on for Edward. Just a little bit under hit there from Zaha. Brentford have it back now with uh, Frank Onyeka, running straight into uh, trouble there in the form of uh, uh, Czech Ducore, who's uh, committed one too many fouls uh, for uh, Simon Hooper's liking. Well, actually, uh, has he given him... The referee definitely pulled out a yellow card, but then he, it's almost like he changed his mind. I don't think Ducore has been booked in the end. They'll wait for confirmation, but I don't... I know he has been booked. It just seemed... It's almost like the referee put his, uh, took his card out and put it away without actually sort of raising it, but he has been booked. We're over the uh, five minutes of injury time now. Brentford have this free kick on the half line, which will be imagine will be the last action of this game. Long ball from Raya towards the edge of the area, headed on. It's bouncing inside the box. Still trying to keep it alive. Godos can't get on the end of it. It's cleared, and the referee calls time on the game at uh, Selhurst Park. Well, both games between Palace and Brentford finished 0-0 last season. Uh, the first game between them this season does see goals, but it's still a draw. It's finished Crystal Palace 1, uh, Brentford 1. Palace taking the lead through uh, Wilf Zaha on 59 minutes. Brentford getting an equaliser through Johan Visser on 88 minutes. That's it for this game. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining me for myself, Paul Shevakovic. Do join us again soon.